dad's uh, toolbox. My dad passed uh, three years ago. And he taught me some fabulous things in life. A uh, very simple man, country man. And he said to me, I should never have to work for a living. I thought, what an idea, what an idea to share with people. Um, he then went on to give me some amazing lessons as to how to do that. The irony of me bringing this toolbox on stage on behalf of my dad is that when I have a hammer in my hand, the whole world becomes a nail. He knew that this was never meant for me as a toolbox. It was about the lessons of living and how to live a life of passion. My dad left uh, school at 15 to follow his passion. Now, it was a necessity as well at the time. It was back in the uh, late 40s, early 50s, living in West Cork, and it was about earning money to uh, help feed your family. And what he had always done since a kid was play with wood. He wanted to be a carpenter. He went on to become a master craftsman, to build houses, and to live his passion. Live his passion in a way that when I was young and working with him, working with him as in you know, shoveling and sweeping floors as he built, I saw the man get lost in his work to the extent that he wouldn't eat lunch, that he'd forget that it was tea time and we'd be home late. Um, really loving life. So that was the first lesson I learned from him. And it was a very simple thing that he'd say to me as we went to work, as we came from work. He said, find your passion. Find your passion and love what you do and do what you love. You'll never work a day again in your life. I'm not saying that finding your passion is an easy thing to do, but in my work now, in 30 years of doing it, I have found that meandering my way through life, I've come to my passion. And it is an amazing thing because I get up in the morning and I never feel I have to go to work. And I now experience what my daddy experienced. In some days I don't eat lunch because lunch hours passed. Sometimes you work late because the hours have gone by, but it's not work. My dad took this box, and I don't know a whole lot about carpentry, but there's tongue and groove in it, there's edgings on it, inside it there's shelving, and this box became his business card in life. He went to London when he finished his apprenticeship, and he brought this box and he said to me, all I do is I go to an employer, put the box on the table, open the box, They'd look at it, they'd see the workmanship, and they'd say, whose box is that? He'd say, that's my box. It's my stuff. He was never out of work. He taught me that if you're going to do it, do it well. Preparing, planning. If you're going to go at it, prepare the ground for it, and then give it your best. Be the best you as you bring yourself to it. As you went through life, he worked hard, but never thought he was working hard. And in his 40s, he noticed that, and this is how he said it to me, he was up a roof, he was hammering, and the hammer went out of his hand. That was, that was weird, and he picked it up and he went again. But then it started happening frequently. And uh, he said this to my mother, who was a nurse, and he just said, like, you know, I kind of just lose the power of it. She said, there's something up. Go to a doctor, a doctor he had never visited, got a blood test, and he had a muscle wasting uh, disorder. So. It was, the prognosis was, this is going to develop, it's genetic, and in a few years' time, you'll be wheelchair-bound, and a few years after that, you'll use, lose all the use of your muscles. So he prepared diligently for that, got in lifts at home, put in toilets downstairs, got ready, and then took up his second passion, which was gardening. And uh, we sat one day, sitting outside in our back garden, three-bedroom house, semi-detached garden, 100, 150 foot long, and down the end of the garden is the, uh, is the new flower bed that has come up and is flourishing now in the height of spring. And I said to him, wow, I said, the, the garden's looking amazing, Dad. You know, what's, what's the scene? What are you at? And he says, yeah, I said, a lot of work gone into that. He said, uh, and he's, at the time he was smoking, roll your owns, and uh, in his inimitable way, he just says, see that down there? That's Everest. Wow. He says, yeah, he says, Everest is at the bottom of the garden. He says, every day I've got to get up and I face Everest. And whether I get to the end of the garden or not. And he said, and that's the buzz. So the second lesson for me was like, if you're going to do it, do it big. For him, it was like Everest is way off down there. And it's something that has to be conquered. And it was fantastic. For me then, it was looking at my life and saying, what am I dreaming? How am I dreaming? Why am I making small of? And what can I do? And what can I put in front of myself to achieve? So as his 
illness progressed, he had to take to a wheelchair. That was the hardest thing for him because him going into a wheelchair, the only argument I ever had with my dad, real argument, was about him getting into a wheelchair. Because I felt that life was passing him by. And if he hadn't got into the wheelchair, that he was becoming immobile and he wasn't getting out and we had this argument. And, and his thing, and of course I understood it, was once I get into that, my feeling is I've given up. And of course he got into it and, and didn't give up because then he went on. But it became increasingly difficult to get to, to Everest because now he had to get a wheelchair down there. So if it was wet and you know, we had the path to go down, but the path then would have to go through the garden and blah, blah. And he started, as what we would say in Cork, is he started taking to the bed. And he found it difficult to get out. And there was every excuse. It's raining, it's cold, ashes, there's nothing on, and there's no point, and all of that. So he did. He got out, and, and we were worried. But then, lo and behold, he starts making a move, and he's back, and he's doing the garden, and, and it's now being tended again. And kind of a month later, it's now flourishing again. And we're sitting down, and this time, he's, at this stage, he's given up the roll your owns, and we're looking down at Everest, and I said to him, so what happened? And he said, and this was my third lesson, he said, it was too big, Everest was too big for me. He said, I had to chunk it down. First step is, get into your work and pants. And so he said, once I can get into my work and pants, I'm out of the bed, and then I can decide on whether we're going to go for Everest or not. I thought, wow, some of the stuff that's stopping me going from where I want to go to and doing what I want to do is because the step is too big. I'm putting the fear in front of it. So now, so now I think of my dad. I don't just think of the box. I see the box and I think, wow, the irony of this, wouldn't you be laughing at me walking around with your box, talking about me being a craftsman? But he knows that the lessons he was giving me were all about very simple things. Find your passion. When you find your passion, you'll never again work. Dream big about that passion. Climb Everest. Always remember, it starts with a very simple thing. Always the first step, get into your work and pants. And then you can decide on whether you climb Everest or not. Thank you very much. <laughs>